Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome to a Books Beside My Bed video. I was going to make this the last one for 2021 but I have a sneaking suspicion that I might do a final one and just wrap up 2021 in its own video since it's only one day. Um, that would be included in the next one from the new year. So we shall see. Anyway, I hope that everyone had a wonderful Christmas if you celebrate it or if you don't celebrate. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend. I predominantly read shorter things this week. It was very busy and there was a lot of cleaning and organizing and things going on for the holidays. So I wasn't reading hugely long things, but I was trying to read something, even if it was only a short story every day, just for my own sanity. So to that end, I read six different things between the 20th and the 25th of December. I read a total of 770 pages and my yearly reading total is 532 books. So the first two books that I read this week were both novellas by Adriana Anders as part of her Love at Last novella series. I had previously read the third book, which was Loving the Mountain Man, and I absolutely adored that. I thought I started this week with book one in that series, but no, it turns out I read book two, so I clearly read this series in reverse order, which is totally fine. You can do that. They're not connected in a way that means that you have to read them one, two, three. Loving the Wounded Warrior is the second book in the Love at Last series, and it follows O'Neill and Kurt. Kurt is a veteran Marine who was discharged due to injuries I believe and he has been walking mountains with an empty wheelchair and he's doing this in memory of his friend but on this particular day in this story O'Neill who is a reporter who has just had to report on some holiday festival drives past him and is intrigued by this man and initially she just wants his story because she's trying to work out exactly what he's doing and she ends up following him on this last part of the trek and she does get his story but they also begin to fall in love. Then book one in the series, because I didn't read them in order, is Loving the Secret Billionaire and this one is about a 28 year old black woman named Veronica who is a teacher but she's also running for local government and she's out canvassing neighborhoods trying to get people's votes and she comes across this cabin and she meets Zach who is blind and unbeknownst to her a billionaire and he becomes quite invested in her election and so he gets involved without telling her and the two end up with a relationship. Now both of these two books had virgin heroes and I cannot for the life of me remember if the third book had a virgin hero trope in it either and I forgot to go and check so that's entirely possible that that's what this is but Loving the Secret Billionaire also had a slight age gap with an older woman because Veronica is 28 and Zach is 23. So it's not significant, but if you are looking for older woman romances, this might count. On the Tuesday of this week, I hosted the Romance Booktuber Tuesday Night Read Along live show, and I was reading The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren, which was their most recent release in 2021. And I absolutely loved this. It was really fun. Part of me kept putting it off because I was worried that I would not enjoy it as much as everyone else seemed to, but that was clearly not the case. I started it in a live show and then had to sit down and read it afterwards in the middle of the day because I just couldn't put it down. This is about single mum Jessica who is in a bit of a rut and hasn't had a relationship in a long time and she's not really fully committing to things and then after a run-in with a guy who she always sees at the coffee shop her and her best friend Fizzy discover that he is part of developing a dating app and it's all about finding people's soulmates and so Fizzy convinces Jessica that they need to go and visit this place and so they end up talking themselves into being part of the pre-launch test group and at first Jessica is kind of reluctant to put in her results but when they come back she's called in and basically told that she and the guy from the coffee shop the designer of this app have the highest match ever recorded. At first Jessica is nonplussed because she's not particularly fond of River. He comes across as very blunt and not very approving of her and so it's kind of a hate to love sort of story but eventually they decide that for the sake of the launch of the app and also with financial benefit for Jessica that they'll go on some dates and they'll play up sort of the publicity around their match and it's really really fun. I love Juno who is Jessica's daughter and River is a very interesting male protagonist in this story and because we only get Jessica's POV for the entire story it takes a lot longer for her to realize exactly why River is the way that he is. It was just so much fun. I really enjoyed reading it. I'm so glad that I picked it up. Then I read another mass market book in the original Sinners Pulp Fiction Library by Tiffany Rice. This was Little Red Riding Crop. It was a collection of short stories. They're all 
erotic romance stories about various couples and these particular stories all focus on couples who are using toys in the bedroom. So very short, very steamy stories. If you're enjoying, if you enjoy the original Sinner series, you'll probably enjoy seeing some of these characters. Then I read His Christmas List by T.L. Swan, which is a Christmas novella that she brought out this month. This one is about Holly who is trying to get to a business meeting out of town and finds herself being delayed by planes that have been cancelled. She's, I think she's trying to get to Alaska. So there's limited planes, the planes get cancelled. She can't get another flight until Friday if she's lucky and there's only one seat there. She ends up taking another flight to another part of the country and then decides to hire a car and drive and then crashes the car. And a local guy named Jack finds her car by the side of the road, tries to take her into town, but the motel is closed for some reason and so he offers to let her stay at his place. So this is very much a forced proximity mountain man kind of story. It was very sweet because Jack, as we find out, is a widower and he really hasn't been with anyone since his wife. And he's trying to understand Holly, who is very concerned about her work and they clearly come from two very different worlds. It was short, it was sweet and enjoyable. The final book that I read this week was Home by Martha Wells, which for some reason kept coming up whenever I was searching for the Murderbot Diaries 7, which when I was looking for my anticipated releases. As it turns out, this is book 4.5 in the Murderbot Diaries series. It is a short story told from the perspective of Dr. Mensa, who is the original character who hired Murderbot in the very first book. And this one is very short, it's less than 20 pages, and it really follows Dr. Mensa as she returns home and is trying to justify the fact that she has brought Murderbot back to her home. So the place where she lives is very non-violent, so Murderbot's presence as a sec unit for security purposes is sort of not what they're used to. And on top of this, we also begin to recognise that Dr. Mensa is not necessarily okay after all the things that she has experienced and is probably dealing with some PTSD and anxiety around everything. As I said, it's less than 20 pages, it's a very quick read, and it just sort of gives some insight into a character that we don't normally get the point of view of in the books. All right, so that is everything that I read this week. I will possibly film again on the 31st and wrap up 2021's books. In the comments, let me know if you have read any of these books or alternatively what you have been reading over the last seven days. Or if you wanna let me know that you're here but you don't wanna leave a comment, feel free to leave a mountain emoji down below. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.